Marina Douglas tells us that art and storytelling are central to her life. Marina says without stories, we would have no past or imagination for the future. Catherine, Marina's employer at Artiscope Studios, says Marina has a heart of gold and recounts that Marina once went on the runway dressed only in magazines. <laughs> Melissa, Marina's cousin, tells us, over the years I've watched Marina blossom into one of the most diverse and talented artists I have ever known. Marina has an incredible practical mind, despite the fact that she is a creative genius. She has an amazing ability to couple vision with what it takes to realize that vision. Marina transforms work from a work of art from the practical to the fantastical. Please welcome Marina Douglas. I'm so excited to be here tonight, thank you. This presentation is about the interaction of my love for art and the intermingling of stories. I first came to love stories when I moved to southern Chile with my entire family in 2001. I was there for four years throughout my high school. This is a photo of my little sister and me at the entirely Spanish-speaking school we attended. Um, that's when communication took on a whole new meaning for me, not speaking Spanish. In retrospect, um, the uniforms do look pretty cute, something we did not think at the time. We hated them. Um, every morning, putting on the same thing, hated them. OK, so this is a telephone pole near our home in Puerto Varas, where we lived. It's a tangled and unintelligible mess, and that's exactly how I felt living in a Spanish-speaking country with no Spanish-speaking ability, except for the word zanahoria, but that just means carrot, so that was not very helpful. <laughs> This is a photo of Volcano Sorno, a volcano in the town we lived, which was the site of my first public communications mishap in gym. Our teacher said something that I later figured out to mean, get ready, get set, go, but only after everyone took off, leaving me with just my new phrase. It's kind of embarrassing. This is a photo my mom snapped of me on one of our many road trips in southern Chile. <laughs> I now get why dogs do it. It's quite a rush. Um, <laughs> so we got to go on many, many road trips to enjoy Chile's vastly beautiful landscape. And the next slide is one of those such sites. I was then um, class president, so I could say much more than just carrot, but I still absolutely hated Jim. Um, to get an idea of how vast Chile's landscape is, if you can imagine putting the width of the United States over the length of Chile, they're about the same. So it just gives an idea of how, how huge. So this is me in my new home, Maine, trying to fly a kite. <laughs> I found, interestingly, that communication wasn't so much easier coming back to the States with everything in English again. It's still an ongoing challenge to be effective. Communication is not unlike kite flying. It takes constant attention and adjustments to strategy to get a message across. I'm interested in visual as well as verbal communication. I'm now an artist and a student and hope one day to be a copywriter or a creative director somewhere. This is an activism poster I did for USM. Um, I'm very passionate about eating disorder awareness and recovery, which is what this poster is about. I painted this after I came back to the States to go to college. I used artwork at this time to communicate emotion when I had no words. Having struggled with an eating disorder myself has informed my work as an artist. I focus on the female figure. This painting is larger than my others at two by four feet. The woman is strong and powerful, and she is walking from light, from shadows to light, which is what I was doing when I painted this, and is a direction I will continue to face. The title of this painting is Exalted. I want to communicate strong and powerful women with my art, comfortable with, them bodies, with their bodies. Women and men fall into the trap of hating their bodies, the very thing which gives them strength and power. Instead of embracing our bodies, we Photoshop them into these weird idealistic images, like in fashion magazines. This is a woman proud of her body. She communicates joy and love for her yellow naked self. Yeah. 
The story in this painting is of a woman growing like the tree she is part of. She's reaching for a leaf of hope. In my own life, I reach toward nature for calm and to regather strength. And like most of my art, I identify very strongly with this image. This is actually a crayon and marker doodle that I did and fell in love with. It's actually, it's a self-portrait, and it's so bright and cheerful, which is why I love it so much. And it's exactly how I would describe myself now, as bright and cheerful. <laughs> so this is me wearing Maggie, which is that dress uh, piece. It's a dress made of piece and woven magazines. And this was such a meaningful project for me because I got to reclaim the fashion magazines that tend to market unhealthy body image toward women and turn it into something creative and neat that fits my body exactly as it is. I actually got to model this at Zero Station a while back. It was really fun. My current endeavor is the Blue Wrap Project. Blue Wrap is a synthetic fabric used to steal sterilized surgical supplies. Try saying that five times fast. It's really hard. And once it's used, it's thrown away. So to upcycle this material, um, we're, artists in Portland are making wearable art to be shown at Portland Museum of Art. This is a dress in progress. I wanted to preserve the feeling for the sheets while still fighting against its linear planes. So I used it to do this. I did use triple pleating for the bust detail and gathers for the skirt. And it was such a fun material to sew with because it doesn't fray at all and it holds its shape really, really well. And, oops, sorry. So <laughs> this was such a great project to be able to do in Portland. It's another story in my life that connects my art with art from, for other people in developing nations. Because um, all the proceeds from, Portland, from the show go to Portland Partners for World Health, sorry. This is Stella, a full-size unicorn that I made with paper mache. This was a community art project I did at Artiscope Studios where I work. And it was such a fun project because the kids got to layer their stories atop of mine. And yeah, it was really fun and very, very messy, so it was good we did it outside. Thank you so much for listening to how my story and my history have influenced my love for art and stories. Someday I hope to tell stories for other people, but for now I'm enjoying making my own stories and just enjoying being in lovely Portland, Maine. Thank you.